After studying these module, we will be able to learn about the risk adjusted measures of portfolio performance evaluation, understand Sharpe's, Strainer's and Jensen's performance measures and finally we will explain the concept of market timing. Getting average portfolio return without considering for risk does not make any sense. When a portfolio carries a degree of risk, portfolio returns must be adjusted for risk before making any meaningful com comparisons. More specifically, the performance of funds should be evaluated in terms of per unit of risk. Risk adjusted measures of performance evaluation using mean variance criteria were identified simultaneously with the capital asset pricing model that is CAPM. Based on the implications of CAPM, Jack Trainer, William Sharpe and Michael Jensen developed three most popular indices for ranking of managers. Performance of portfolio can be evaluated by correctly assessing the timing of the market. Now we start with risk adjusted performance indices. The performance of the portfolio should be evaluated in terms of return per unit of risk. The portfolio fund that provides higher return per unit of risk would be considered to perform better. The three popular measures of evaluating portfolio performance estimating portfolio return per unit of risk are Sharpe's ratio given in 1966, Trainer's ratio given in 1965 and Jensen's alpha. Now we start with Sharpe's ratio. This ratio was developed by William Sharp in 1966 to measure the risk adjusted performance. The Sharpe's index measures the average portfolio excess returns relative to the total amount of portfolio risk. It is revert to total risk trade-off. The portfolio excess return is also known as risk premium of the portfolio and is calculated by subtracting the risk free rate of return from the rate of return from a portfolio. The risk premium of the portfolio during a sample period is then divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio returns during that period. The Sharpe's measure is also called reward to variability ratio. Sharpe's ratio is given as follows. Mathematically, Sharpe's model of rate of return is equal to expected rate of return minus R F divided by standard deviation or SP is equal to RP minus RF divided by standard deviation. In this formula, we have used this is equation 1 and in this equation, we have used RP that shows average return on portfolio P, RF that shows risk free rate of return. Standard deviation for P shows standard deviation of portfolio P. The Sharpe's index is presented graphically in the figure following. Standard deviation of P is equal to standard deviation of portfolio P. The Sharpe's index is presented graphically in the figure shown below. This is figure 1. This is a graphical demonstration of Sharpe's model. This shows that on x axis we have taken the standard deviation of p and in on the y axis we have taken the r of p and we have one horizontal line and then we have from this horizontal line we have that is 45 degree line that shows sp this is graphical presentation of sharpe's index in this figure we have measured the standard deviation of the portfolio on x axis and on y axis we have measured the portfolio return. The Sharpe's index SP measures the slope of line emanating from risk free rate outward to the portfolio in question. A good investment is one that yields higher returns without too much additional risk. 
the greater the portfolio's sharpage in ratio, the better the portfolio has performed. All this discussion can be shown with the help of an example. We have five columns. The first column shows portfolio that is A and B. In the second column we have return that is RP. For A we have 10% return, for B we have 12% return. In the third column we have risk free rate that is shown by RF. For A we have 5% and for B again we have 5%. In the fourth column, we have shown excess return that is RP minus RF. For A, it is 5%, for B, it is 7%. And final column, we have shown the portfolio risk that is standard deviation P. For A, it is 2% and for B, it is 4%. Using the equation, we have got for A 2.5 and for B it is 1.75. Thus we can say that performance of portfolio A is better because its index is higher that is 2.5 is greater than 1.75. Despite the fact that portfolio B had a higher return that is 12% is greater than 10%. After Sharpe's index we are going to discuss Trainer's ratio. This measure of portfolio performance was developed by Jack Trainer in 1965. He applies the concept of characteristic line that relates the market return to specific portfolio return without any direct adjustment for risk. Beta that measures the portfolio systematic risk is the slope of the characteristic line. Some people view systematic risk as the measure of volatility. The investors get an indication about the fund's volatility by comparing the slopes that is beta of the characteristic line. The steeper the line, the more systematic risk a fund possess. Incorporating above concepts in a single index, trainers developed a performance measure that relates the risk premium of the portfolio to the amount of systematic risk that is beta. The trainer's ratio is calculated by dividing the portfolio excess return over the sample period by portfolio beta during that period. The portfolio excess return is equal to the portfolio rate of return minus the risk free rate of return. Trainer's ratio is referred to as reward to volatility ratio. Mathematically it is given by TP is equal to RP minus RF divided by beta P. In this equation, this is equation 2. In this equation we have used RP which shows average rate of return on portfolio P. RF this is risk free rate of return. Then we have used beta P that shows beta coefficient of portfolio P. Then we have shown TP that shows portfolio's return per unit of systematic risk. Then we have used the trainer's index in a graphical manner. This is figure second. The figure two shows that on x axis we have measured the portfolio beta and on y axis we have taken expected return on portfolio P. In this figure the index measures the slope of line emanating outward from the risk free rate of return to the portfolio under consideration. You are watching from, from the figure that a larger trainer's value indicates a larger slope. Portfolio with higher TP value represents better portfolio for investors regardless of their risk preferences. The trainer index considers only systematic risk. It automatically assumes an adequately diversified portfolio. Mathematically we can make an equation third that is trainer's index for market portfolio is given as TM 
is equal to Rm minus Rf divided by beta m. Here beta m is equal to 1. We can illustrate this thing with the help of an example. Assume that we have following data for three portfolios namely D, E and F with their rate of return and beta. The risk free rate is 12%. The risk for market that is beta m is equal to 1 and the market rate of return is 18%. We have made four columns. The first column gives portfolio market that is DEF. The second column gives us rate of return with regard to market and then finally DEF. For market the rate of return is 18%, for D it is 22%, for E it is 20% and for F it is 16%. In the third column we have beta. For market is it 1.0, for D it is 1.20, for E it is 1.05 and for F it is 0.90. In the fourth column we have shown risk free rate. For market it is 12%, for D it is again 12%, for E it is again 12% and for finally F it is again 12%. So we can say that the value for each portfolio is for M market it is 0.6, for D it is 0.083, for E it is 0.076. Tf is equal to 0.044. The results show that both D and E beat the market portfolio. Portfolio D has the best performance with highest T value. That is portfolio F did not even share the market and did not even capture the market. A negative trainer value can be achieved in two cases. First, when RP is less than RF that is negative risk premium portfolio with very poor performance and secondly when beta P is less than 0 that is negative beta value then portfolio having very good performance with low risk. The negative T value creates confusion in determining the performance of the portfolio. To avoid confusion the values could be plotted on a security market line or use CAPM to calculate the required return that is within bracket E of RP is equal to RF plus beta within bracket RM minus RF close the bigger bracket. We compare it with the actual return that is realized return RP in excess of risk free rate that is RF. It is divided by beta. Both the measures rank the portfolio performance on a risk adjusted basis. Now we are going to compare the trainer's measure with Sharpe's measure. The Sharpe's measure evaluates the performance of a portfolio on the basis of return and total risk. It takes into account the diversification of the portfolio. The ranking of the portfolio through both these Sharpe's and trainer will be identical for a well diversified portfolio. A less diversified por portfolio will rank lower according to the Sharpe's ratio since it will show greater risk when using standard deviation. Now we will move on to the third ratio given by Jensen's alpha. The trainers and the Sharpe's index measures the relative performance of the portfolio adjusted for risk. Michael Jensen in 1968 developed an index that measures the absolute performance of portfolio on a risk adjusted basis. The Jensen's measure evaluates the portfolio's manager's predictive ability that is his ability to earn excess returns through successful prediction of security prices which are higher than those which we could expect at given level of portfolio risk. It allows the investor to statistically test whether the portfolio produced an abnormal excess return relative to the overall capital market. The portfolio performance is compared to the market portfolio 
Jensen's index determines this excess return of a portfolio or stock or security using capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model can be expressed in terms of an equation. This will be fourth equation. This is given as expected return of P is equal to RF plus beta P within bracket RF minus RF close the bracket and close the bigger bracket. In this equation we have used ERP is equal to expected return of an asset or portfolio. RF has stood for risk free rate of return. RM is for return on market portfolio. Beta P is for beta or systematic risk of an asset or portfolio. We want to obtain Jensen's index, a time series regression of the securities return that is RP minus RF is regressed against the market portfolio excess return that is RM minus RF. Now we can write this equation for in a way that is RP minus RF is equal to alpha P plus beta P within bracket RM minus RF close the bracket plus EP. In this equations we have used RP stands for return on portfolio. RF stands for risk free rate of return. Alpha P is Jensen's index measures of the past performances and the different performances of the portfolio. Beta P is stands for beta or systematic risk of the portfolio. RM stands for return on market portfolio. EP is for portfolio random error term. Now taking all these figures in the equation we can obtain RP minus RF is equal to alpha P plus beta P within bracket RM minus RF close the bracket. This is our fifth equation. Now by Levy and Sarnet in 1984 the average error term that is EP is always zero. So the equation fifth becomes alpha P is equal to RP minus within bracket RF minus again bracket RM minus RF close the bracket beta P close the bigger bracket. Alpha P is equal to 0 in CAPM. This shows that the stock or portfolio has performed exactly same as the market expected based on its systematic risk. The Jensen's alpha for a particular portfolio is vertical intercept of the regression model described in the equation 6. The higher the vertical intercept that is alpha p the greater is the abnormal return earned on the portfolio in excess of market return. In Sharpe's and Trainer's model the intercept of the line is at the origin whereas in Jensen's model the intercept can be at any point including the origin. This is shown graphically in the figure 3 or the figure shown below. This is a graphical presentation of Jensen's alpha. In this figure the upper line with alpha p shows positive value indicates superior management performances that is the management has earned superior returns over the market returns. The line alpha p is equal to zero represent neutral management performance that is Returns are equivalent to any unmanaged market portfolio or large randomly selected portfolios managed with a naive buy hold strategy. Line alpha p is equal to negative value represents poor performance of the management. This could be because the returns were not sufficient to offset expenses incurred in the selection and managing process. The entire Jensen alpha can be explained with the help of an example. We use five columns and here the information is given to evaluate the performance of portfolio ABC using Jensen's alpha.
Jensen's alpha can be explained with an example. This is example 4. Here, the information is given to evaluate the performance of portfolios A, B, C using Jensen's alpha. Here, we have 5 columns are given. Column 1 is for portfolio. Column 2nd is risk free return. 3rd is actual return that is RP. 4th is market return that is RM. And finally we have beta. The first portfolio is of A. Here the risk free return is 5%. The actual return is 12%. The market return is 15%. And for A the beta is 0.5. Then we have B and C and we have risk free return for B as 5% and for C it is 5%. Then we have actual return for B it is 20% for C it is 14%. Then we have market return for B it is 15% and again for C it is 15%. And then finally we have beta for B it is 1.0 and for C it is 1.10. Putting the Jensen's alpha formula we get Jensen's alpha P is equal to RP minus within bracket RF minus within bracket RM minus RF close the small bracket beta of P close the entire bracket. For alpha A by putting these figures in this equation we get 2% that is excess positive return. For alpha B by putting figures in the above mentioned formula we get 5% that is excess positive return. And for alpha C by solving this equation we get minus 2% that is negative return. Here portfolio B earns greater absolute excess return than portfolio A that is 5% as compared to 2%. Portfolio had a negative return so it has performed poorly. Now we are going to learn about market timing. Managers having good market timing sense can increase the performance of the portfolio by shifting funds between stocks and bonds. Market timing involves adjusting the positioning of a portfolio by correctly adjusting with direction of the market, either bull or bear phases. The performance of the portfolio in this regard could be assessed by looking at the behavior of portfolio returns or relative to the returns of the market. The return on portfolio and return on market at different intervals are plotted on a scatter diagram to see the direction of relationship between the two. In case of portfolio constructed keeping in mind stock selection only without any regard to market timing. The average beta of the portfolio stands constant. Plotting such portfolio returns and market returns we find a linear relationship. However, if a manager successfully assess the market direction and adjust the portfolio positioning accordingly, we would find a situation of high portfolio betas at times of rise in the market that is bull phase and low portfolio betas at times of decline in the market that is bear phase. In other words, considering the market timing correctly, Managers restructure the portfolio that is component stock in such a way that beta of the portfolio rises in bullish market conditions and comes down in bearish market conditions. This we can explain with the help of an example. This is our fifth example. Now suppose that an investor holds only the market index portfolio and T-bills. If the weight of the market were constant say 0.6 then portfolio beta would also be constant and security characteristic line would plot as a straight line with slope 0.6 as in the figure 5a shown below. 
if however the investor could correctly time the market and shift fund into it when the market does well the scl would plot a figure as shown in figure below 5b if bull and bear markets can be predicted the investor will shift more into the market when the market is about to go up the portfolio beta and the slope of the scl will be higher when rm is higher resulting in curved line that appears in figure 5b in this figure we have used the rm minus rf on x axis and rp minus rf on y axis and in figure 5.b we have used rm minus rf on x axis and rp minus rf on y axis in 5a the slope is 0.6 and here no market timing and beta is constant in 5b this this shows steadily increasing slope here market timing is given beta increases with expected market access returns now we make a summary of what we have discussed so far risk adjusted measure of portfolio performance evaluation are based on capital asset pricing model sharpe's ratio is equal to sp is equal to rp minus rf divided by standard deviation of p trainer's ratio is equal to tp is equal to rp minus rf divided by beta for p sharpe measure accounts for diversification of portfolio it is related with the excess portfolio return to the total risk that is standard deviation then we have discussed trainer's ratio trainer's ratio relates the excess portfolio return to the systematic risk that is beta and does not account for diversification then we have discussed jensen's alpha jensen's alpha measures the absolute performance of portfolio jensen's alpha is given with the help of an exam with the equation that is alpha of p is equal to rp minus within bracket rf minus within bracket rm minus rf close the bracket multiplied by beta p close the bigger bracket then we have discussed market timing market timing involves adjusting the positioning of portfolio correctly with the direction of the market as is shown with the help of above two figures 5a and 5b considering the market timing correctly managers restructure the portfolio in such a way that beta of portfolio rises in bullish market conditions and comes down in bearish market conditions